Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to pass through a GPU on VMware ESXi. Now, today I'm going to be doing a Windows virtual machine that I'm going to be passing it through to. But you can do um, Mac OS or Linux. So you can see we're on the ASXi web UI. All we want to go to is host and then manage. Once we've clicked that uh, and give it a moment to load, we want to go to hardware. And then once that, you want to see you'll see PCI devices. Okay. You want to select your graphics controller. Now I'm doing an iGPU, so mine's the third gen core processor graphics control. But yours might be a 6500 XT or a 3090, whatever you want. Uh, and just click toggle pass to. I'm not going to do that because they already have. But then it'll say uh, you need to reboot your host for the changes to apply. So you can just click reboot host and then reboot. Then once you've done that, it's as simple as clicking on the VM that you want to pass through to. Going on to edit, and then clicking add other device, PCI device, scroll down, you can see it's selected here, and all you need to do is click save, then we're going to power on the virtual machine. Also before you'll see invalid memory reservation, all you need to do to fix that is you can either go in the memory options or you can scroll down here and just click reserve all memory it'll just reserve all of them two gigabytes of RAM so as you can see Windows is now booting up so I'm just gonna uh, skip along so as you can see we're on the desktop uh, this is actually connected to a domain controller uh, so that's why I don't see that the internet's working right now because the DC is off so, all we're going to do is uh, check if the graphics have been passed through. So we're going to go to Device Manager. And then you'll see Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. You'll see two of them. And you'll see a uh, exclamation mark through that. Because the uh, driver is it's trying to start is not the same as the posted display adapter. So to fix this, you need to add two variables. Um into your advanced VM configuration. So, all I'm going to do is shut this down and we'll add the variables. So, we're going to edit the configuration. So, I'm just going to refresh this because we're now powered off. If we click on edit again, give it a moment to load, and we're going to go to VM options advanced scroll down edit configuration then there's a configuration parameters that pops up we're just going to click add parameter twice we're going to add these parameters so I've got a text edit uh, document open on my Mac um, with the commands in so you're going to have to bear with me whilst I get them both so the first one is PCI dot star like this and then after that it's going to be 1 200 as the value like so then the other one is the end PCI hole and that's going to be 2200 There is also uh, another that we need to add, but we're just going to click OK for now. Let's move on to that other one. So we're going to open up advanced settings again by going to edit configuration here and add in the last parameter, which is hypervisor.cpuid v0. And then the equals is going to be false in all capital letters. We're going to click OK. Save and now we're going to boot the virtual machine back up again so I will not make you wait I'm going to uh, do this off camera so I'll boot it back into Windows now go back to device manager there's a few more things 
Now you'll still see that it is x down. That's because we already have one that is uh, installed. So first we're gonna um, I'm gonna beat up this PF sense router because that's what this is connected to. Um, make sure it has an internet connection, your VM. And you're gonna go over to the VM settings uh, in Windows and enable remote desktop. Okay, just click that and then confirm. And that's all you need to do. So let's wait for this router to boot up. So now that everything's on, all we're going to do is go to a remote desktop computer on the same network. Uh, go to the start menu and tap in IDP. Uh, if that doesn't work, you have to do the IDP command, which I'm going to search up real quick. The MSTSC. Okay. MSTSC. There we go. Type in the IP address or the name of the computer. So I know it's client1.hsv.local. Now, if your computer is still not connected to the internet, just uh, change the adapter options, disable and re-enable the adapter. Like so. I'm also going to go an open command prompt and type in the IP address. IP config forward slash all. It'll tell us everything. 1.101. Okay. So, 192.168.1.101. It's going to ask for a username and password. I'm just going to do this one. Oh, I can't do that. I'm just going to enter username and password. Click yes. Then we're going to click yes again. Here it'll say terminate. Just click OK. We can now close the client connection. And now we can uh, wait for everything to um, log in. So here we are. We're back. Um, all we want to do is open up device manager. Remembering that we're on remote desktop now. And disable your other Microsoft Basic Display Adapters. You can see that now Intel HD Graphics 4000 is now enabled. Um, and we're going to install GPU-Z just so I can show you too. But you can see now that it's fully enabled because we're using remote desktop. So when you um, plug in a HDMI and you disable both of this uh, basic display adapter, you want to just click disable device. Because that is for the VMware remote console. That's its drivers. So we're going to disable that. The remote display adapter is completely fine. You can keep that as it is. But that's it. That's GPU pass through. Let me just install GPU Z just to show you. So GPU Z allows us to see what the specs of the GPU that is installed in the computer is. So such as the clock speed, etc. Um so we're going to install that. Um just click classic standalone mode if you want to, which is what I'm gonna do. Uh which allows you to do it in portable mode. So you don't even need to install it on the computer. So it can take a while to load, so let's wait for that. So I couldn't actually get it uh, working GPU Z uh, because of some policies that I had set on my domain controller. But this is what it should look like. You can see it tells you the name, um, the memory size, and much more. Hope this ha helps uh, most of you. Uh, have any problems, please email me link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.